Okay, so to solve this math problem without the aid of a calculator will require you to know a few things about powers and exponents. Matter of fact, there is a particular rule that we have to use to solve this problem that tends to give students a lot of confusion. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that is uh, just in this one second because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to solve this problem all on your own. And the problem is 125 to the negative one third power. What is this equal to? So if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second. Then I'm going to thoroughly explain the different aspects of this problem because we need to talk about a few rules and a couple of strategies. Not that difficult, but uh, there are a few different moving parts. Again, we do not want to use our calculator, so don't pick up your calculator. You will see a problem for those of you that are taking like an algebra course. Uh, there'll be plenty of times where your teacher will say, no calculators allowed. So if you're saying, I can do this problem, just get my calculator. No, 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 we need to understand the principles uh, without using a calculator. All we need is that supercomputer right between our ears, right up here. That thing is so powerful, certainly much better than any AI out there. That's actual intelligence. So uh, definitely all we need to solve a problem like this. Now, uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so 125 to the negative one-third power. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Well, if you did this correctly, you came up with one-fifth. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you did this right, and if that's the case, let's celebrate with a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of powers and exponents. They really won't know what that means, but it just sounds pretty cool. So tell them anyways, who knows, they might take you out to dinner. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. Now, uh, for those of you that didn't get this right, and if you're like totally lost, uh, that's understandable because again, uh, these type of problems tend to confuse students, but this is nothing that you cannot learn, okay? But there's different parts of this problem and we'll break down uh, these parts right now. Okay, so the first thing we uh, need to realize is that we're dealing with a negative exponent, okay? So let's just uh, make sure we understand the basic parts of a power. So if I have two to the third power, right? This little three is the exponent, and this big two down here is called the base. The entire thing is called a power, okay? So two to the third power, this little three again uh, is the exponent. So here we're dealing with a negative exponent, and an exponent could be it could be an integer, it could be anything, it could be a decimal, uh, and in this case, it's a fraction. But nevertheless, we wanna kind of uh, note that it is a negative value, okay? So this rule that I was kind of referring to, or this uh, particular situation that a lot of students confuse is the following. Now, when it comes to powers and exponents, I'll tell you what the rule is here in a second. There are a few different rules. I'm thinking there's like five off the top of my head. We're only going to be uh, focusing, it, focusing in on a few in this particular uh, uh, problem. But this is one of the rules that you need to know about powers and exponents. All right, let me actually just go up here real quick. And yeah, This is very important and relevant to the problem that we're looking at. So in algebra, okay, and when you're dealing with powers and exponents, we have different situations that we can have. We could have scenarios where we're multiplying powers uh, or dividing powers, things like this, or taking powers to powers. Uh, and these type of uh, 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 situations in mathematics, particularly algebra, because we do a lot of powers and exponents in algebra, uh, there are what we call properties of powers and exponents. Okay, and there's five. Uh, I'll just kind of list out a few. A to the m times n is equal to a plus or a to the m plus n a to the m over n. We're talking about this is multiplication of powers with the same base. This is division of powers with the same base. I'm kind of, you know, quickly just showing you what a few of these rules look like, okay? We're not going to cover 
all of these rules in this particular um, prompt. It's just you know too much uh, to try to cover. But if you do need additional help with powers and exponents, you may want to check out like my Algebra 1 course. You'll see a link to that in the description below. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on the topic. But we do need to look at a couple of, of these rules that we need for this particular problem. And one of those rules is dealing with negative exponents. So this rule goes this way. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. Now, it seems pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at an example of this rule. So uh, we, what we have here is a power okay, with base a and negative n as its exponent. Okay, So let's take a look at an example of 2 to the negative third. So what this rule says, we can write this as 1 right over a to the n. So this a to the negative n, if we notice here, it becomes positive, 1 over a to the n. So this is the rule for negative exponents. Okay. Now, in application, this rule tends to confuse a lot of students. But you know, when you look at this, you're like, yeah, this is not too bad there, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Why are you trying to make it such a big deal out of this rule? Well, you'll see why here in a second. OK, so 2 to the negative third power is equal to 1 over 2 to the third. Uh, so this is just, again, an example of this rule, which we'll, uh, we will be using uh, later on in this particular problem. But let's take a look at a few more examples of this rule. And I'm going to show you an easy way to apply this rule. And if you remember this, you are going to keep yourself out of hot water when it comes to negative uh, powers and exponents, or negative exponents in power problems. And this is very, very common. OK, so here is a, effectively how you can interpret this rule. So let's take a look at this uh, situation. We have 4 to the negative third over 3 to, to the negative 5. Any time I want to change the uh, sign of the exponent. In other words, if I want to go from negative to positive or positive to negative, all I have to do is put that power on the opposite side of the fraction bar. OK, so notice this power is in the numerator. OK, so if I put it down in the denominator, it goes from negative to positive. It's as easy as that. Now, this power down here has a negative exponent, 3 to the negative 5. Well, if I want to turn it into a positive exponent, I just move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, in this case, the numerator. OK, so if you can remember that, then this is effectively the application of this particular rule I just showed you here. OK, all right, let's take a look at uh, more examples of this. So what if I had 1 over x squared? I'm like, you know what? I just feel like making this x squared into a negative exponent. Well, easy. I could just take this thing and move it up into the numerator. So now I have x to the negative 2 over 1. Because remember down here, and the denominator is always 1. And anything divided by 1 is just uh, itself. So x to the negative 2 divided by 1 is just x to the negative 2. Now take a look at this situation. Doesn't this look like a to the negative n? And look how we wrote it right here, 1 over a to the positive n. So this is like the, the rule in reverse. Okay, You need to know how to shift these powers so you can change the sign of these exponents. This is a big deal in algebra. And of course, we're looking at a few uh, easy examples. But again, this tends to confuse a lot of students. All right, we're going to take a look at the rest of the uh, parts of this uh, problem. We'll come back um, and use this rule in a second. But uh, before we go to the next step, I would love for you to take a step, and that is to uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button. Uh, this has a tremendous positive impact on my YouTube channel. It really is like the fuel that keeps me going. Every time someone views my uh, videos or subscribes to my channel, I kind of mentally you know, interpret that as a new student, and I'm trying to make my classroom as large as possible. I am obsessed with trying to help people understand math. I mean, math is one of those topics that, you know, you hear about, you know, all the time, you know, people are failing in math, people are struggling with math. It doesn't have to be that way. Okay. If you get clear and understandable math, uh, math instruction, typically math instruction that doesn't sound like it's coming right out of a textbook, right? That's what I'm trying to do is teach you in ways that hopefully you like and understand. But anyway, subscribing to my channel uh, does a lot of help. And if you're new to my channel, you'll find a couple thousand videos on my channel. Of course, I'm adding videos every day from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. But uh, anyways, back to the problem. All right, so 
we know we have a negative exponent, so we're going to have to apply that rule that we're talking about. Uh, one of the common about negative exponents as well, so let's say I had 2 to the negative 2, I'm mean, sorry, 2 to the negative 7, okay? Uh, some of you might be saying, well, isn't it okay just to leave our answer like this? Well, not really, okay? Typically in mathematics, your teachers, okay, are, are going to want to see your final answer written with positive exponents, something like this, 1 over 2 to the 7th. It's really kind of not uh, looked upon uh, well, okay, to leave negative exponents. Although you will see that it's not technically incorrect, but most uh, math students are, are math teachers, excuse me, are going to require you to write your final power, okay, or your expression with a positive exponent, okay? All right, so again, we're going to have to come back and deal with this negative exponent. But now let's talk about the other aspects of this problem because we are not using our calculator. So how can we do this problem without the aid of a calculator? Well, the first thing we want to do is look at the base. Like here we have 125, and anytime you can write the base to a power, right? Here's a base, and here is an exponent. This entire uh, thing is a power. Anytime you can write the base as a power itself, that is the ticket to get the right answer. Okay, that is how you uh, solve these particular problems. And any problem that you're going to be given uh, that uh, can be done without the aid of a calculator will have a base where you can express it as a power. Okay, so 125, we want to write that as a power. Uh, now, before I show you the answer, if I told you to write 25 or express that base, let's say I had 20, uh, 25 to the fourth power, well, I wouldn't want to express 25 as what? A power itself. So that would be 5 squared to the fourth power. Okay, so 125, what is that as a power? Well, hopefully uh, you see that that is 5 to the third power because 5 times 5 times 5, this is 25 times 5, that gets us to 125. Okay, so that's what you want to do first is write this base as a power itself. Now we have 5 to the third, all of this to the negative 1 third. Now we're ready to take the next step and we're going to have to apply another rule. Okay, so this rule, let me show you an easy example of it uh, with uh, this uh, little example right here, is a power to a power. In other words, an outside exponent to an inside exponent. So we're taking a power to a power, okay? Now the formal rule itself is a to the m uh, to the n is equal to a to the m times n. Again, I'm not covering everything uh, in full instruction in this particular video. Uh, it just, you know, that that's um, a kind of a different level, um, you know, a video, if you will, or of instruction. You do need to get full instruction. This is kind of a little bit of a tutorial, what I'm teaching you here, but we can kind of understand the rule by a simple example like this. So 2 to the 3rd to the 4th, anytime we're taking a power to another power, okay, what we can do is take that outside exponent, and we're going to multiply it by the inside exponent. So 2 to the 3rd to the 4th, is equal to 2 to the 12th, okay? So it's as uh, simple as that. So in this particular problem, we have a power to a power, so we're going to simply take this power here, this exponent, and we're going to multiply it to this inside exponent. And this is an easy example uh, to see this rule in action. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So we have 5 uh, to the third power, parentheses, to the negative 1 third. So we're going to take this negative 1 third and multiply it by 3. So that's going to be 3 times negative 1 third. Of course, I know all of you are experts in fractions, so that's going to be 3 over 1 times negative 1 over 3, which it gives us a negative 1 as our final uh, product here. Okay, so now we have 5 to the negative 1. Now at this point, some of you might be saying, okay, I am done. Here is my answer, uh, teacher, and you're, you know, your teacher is going to come back and take a few points off. And you're going to be like, what are you talking about? I did this right. Look at all my beautiful work. Well, they're going to be upset about this, this negative exponent here. Uh, they're, they're going to want to see that you understand the rule for negative exponents. You have to take the next step. Now, all the things that I tell you in my videos come from the School of Hard Knocks. Right? I've been teaching this for many, many years. Uh, and, of course, I've been doing math for decades and decades and decades. I've made all the mistakes. I've seen all the mistakes. Well, not all of them, but maybe 99.9999% of them. And I'm telling you, anytime I kind of emphasize something to you, you know, 
I'm basically trying to save you, uh, you know, uh, the heartache of making that mistake. That's a very common uh, type of error. Okay, so if you can kind of have a situational awareness when you're dealing doing problems, like say with powers and exponents, and some of this stuff that I'm telling you, if you kind of remember it, it's going to go a long way. Okay, so we're not done yet. So we have five to the negative one uh, power, and again. Here comes that rule, a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. Now here, hopefully you could say, oh yeah, uh, 5 to the negative 1, we're going to fit in the rule, it's equal to 5, 1 over 5 to the positive 1, which of course is 1 fifth. And that is our answer. But let's suppose you forgot the rule, but you just kind of remembered uh, that application of what I was telling you about, that we need to, uh, uh, if we want to change the sign, of the exponent, all we need to do is move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. So here, 5 to the negative 1 is up in the numerator. So all I have to do is move it down into the denominator. So that would bring us, that would uh, be 5 to the positive 1, or simply uh, 5, right? And what remains up in the numerator is 1. So that's 1 over 5, or 1 fifth. Okay, so you're absolutely going to see problems like this without... Uh, using a calculator. Matter of fact, um, you might find it kind of interesting as you get into more advanced math, uh, you're not always going to be using your calculator 100%. Uh, you'll probably find more restrictions from your teacher saying put the calculator away. You, uh, you'll probably have a lot of exams where you know half of the exam you, could you can take with the calculator and the other half you can't. Now why is that? Well it's because your teacher wants to see that you're learning the actual principles and concepts behind, you know, how to manage these prompts, all right? They're just not interested in you plugging in buttons into a calculator. Now, I'm not saying calculators aren't important. You definitely need to know how to use a calculator, and that's a separate discussion because a lot of students, you know, especially with the scientific and graphing calculators, do not even use their uh, calculators correctly, but they would be much better um, at using, at using their calculator correctly if they understood the concepts, right? There are no shortcuts in mathematics, and hopefully this little video helps you out. But if you truly want to get good at, you know, algebra or mathematics, remember, you have to follow through uh, by practicing this stuff. So check out the videos, different uh, videos on my YouTube channel. Of course, if you uh, want my best formal instruction, I'll leave links to my most popular courses in the description. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.